So now in this video we're going to take a 2 volt power supply here that is powering the circuit and boost that voltage. We need at least about 9 volts to light these 3 series LEDs. And as you can see when I turn the power on, they do light up. The first thing that we need for this circuit is an oscillating signal. So it's alternating high or low. And I'm using the 74HC14 integrated circuit. There's not gates. We're using one of them. They got uh, Schmidt trigger not gates in them. And we add a capacitor and resistor to set the timing of high and low. I'm using a 10 kilo ohm resistor right there, which is lower than recent videos. But I covered this circuit in the last two or three videos. So... We're not going to go over that anymore. Just be aware we're getting a high-low signal. Last video, I think it was, we had the uh, transistor being turned on and off by that signal. I was using the 2N3904. The 2N2222 can handle more current. Now, when the output goes high, the transistor turns on. This inductor has a current path. Also, uh, before it turns on, the uh, capacitor will charge up a little bit, a little bit below 2 volts because we got that diode drop. But in uh, any case, Pastor turns on, current flows through. Uh, inductors don't instantly start current, passing current though. And ultimately what's going to limit current is how much resistance the inductor has. Mine has uh, 25 ohms right there, which I think keeps everything uh, within the uh, power limits of the components. I could be wrong though, but I think we're good to go in the circuit. So in any case, current starts flowing through. Then the output drops from high to low. The transistor turns off. There's only uh, one current path. The inductor does not instantly stop conducting. It raises uh, its voltage to keep current flowing for a little bit as needed. Uh, so in this case, it passes current through the diode and charges the capacitor. Of course, the diode is to make sure that the capacitor doesn't discharge back to ground but uh, or back to the positive supply because it will have a higher voltage. Each time you pump more current into the capacitor because the transistor is turning on and off, transistor turns off, more current pumps into it, its voltage is going to go up. So we have a possibility of the voltage getting dangerously high. The capacitor I'm using is rated for 25 volts. So we got a Zener diode here. If the voltage gets to about 16 volts, the uh, Zener diode here starts conducting. So another thing, you'll remember I said each time you pump current into the capacitor, it's coming from 2 volts, the voltage will rise. So it's taken multiple uh, pumps of current to uh, get the voltage to rise. So ultimately, you need a lot more current uh, coming in than what the capacitor can provide for powering a load at a higher voltage. So um, just doing the math here, uh, 2 volts uh, divided by 25 ohms of resistance, I think we can get up to 80 milliamps of current. Of course, that's pulses. That's not steady. Um, but... Uh, we're just going to do simple math here. If it were steady, um, if we were getting 9 volts out, you can expect this is rounded off. About 17 milliamps of current coming out. Um, so you need a lot more current coming in. But you got a higher voltage coming out. So if this were uh, perfect, there would be an even balance between voltage and current. And then uh, I don't think this can actually get up to 16 volts. I think I came a little short unless... Uh, my oscilloscope was uh, misreading the value, but in any case, if we uh, boost the 2 volts up to a 16 volts, maybe it'll get uh, 10 milliamps out. Of course, this isn't perfect. This isn't steady current. The transistor is on. It's on longer than it uh, should be to make it ideal and other factors, but that just kind of gives you an idea of how you convert uh, voltage to current, and I, that's why I put here that the, the current out that uh, we're talking about is if you think in pulses. Now, we, uh, I put another note here that uh, the three series blue LEDs need approximately 9 volts to light up, just as a reminder. So, I think I covered all the details on there. I'm using a uh, 47 microfarad capacitor to store the charge, and as I said before, to set the timing, it's a, uh, so that's 47 microfarad, this is 100 times smaller, I should say, that's 100 times larger than the timing capacitor I'm using. It's a very low value, so that uh, we can get a very fast oscillation. I don't know how fast it is, but we're only using 10,000 kilo ohms to charge and discharge it. And here's a quick look at the circuit. So in recent videos, it wasn't the uh, last video, but uh, two or three videos before that, we looked at making an oscillator with this setup here. So we got uh, 
not gate Schmidt triggers that we're not using at all. Schmidt trigger not gate. You got to power the integrated circuit too. Of course, uh, 74 HC14 is the integrated circuit we're using. And uh, that is the output. That's the input. It's monitoring the voltage, the output charges and discharges um, because the output has a higher low state that's opposite of the uh, input there. And uh, so you can use that opposite effect to alternate whether the capacitor is uh, discharging or charging. But in any case, we can also take a little bit of power there. Again, 2.2 kilo ohm resistor because we're not using much voltage to the base, the middle pin of the transistor. So uh, none of this was on this schematic, but we looked at it in recent videos. Now we have the transistor there. So uh, when uh, we're connected to ground, low output, transistor's off, uh, there's no current flow. And then uh, we get a little current though, going uh, through base to emitter there. Then the transistor turns on and current can go through the coil, collector and emitter to ground. When we turn that off, again, the coil wants to keep conducting. So we got another path here. We got a diode and I think you can actually see the gray band there. It doesn't usually show up on camera terribly well, but uh, we got the uh, diode here. Current can flow into the capacitor. Also, once voltage gets high enough, because we got three series LEDs, we got this jumper there coming. It's a one kilo ohm resistor and uh, it would let more current go through if the voltage could rise up, but I think we're probably getting limited uh, really close to nine volts. But in any case, it, uh, it's kind of hard to see LEDs there. I just kind of cascade them coming down there. So they're in series. The same current has to flow through all of them and then go to ground. And just as a precaution, we got uh, this Zener diode here. Um, this is actually a 50 volt capacitor. I realized I said 25 before. But in any case, um, we have it uh, reverse bias. So the uh, cathode there, the gray band, is towards the more positive side of the circuit because they break down. I, I shouldn't say break down. They start passing current at a certain voltage. It's a 16 volt Zener diode. It starts safely passing current while reverse bias. Not all diodes can uh, do that. Uh, it's best to avoid it unless you know for sure the diode can conduct well reverse bias. But uh, in any case, this is my short video series. Most of these topics, uh, pretty much all of them, I covered in uh, recent videos of this series. So hopefully you enjoyed the circuit. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.